Joining me now is Stephen Hansen, President, CEO, and the founder of Acme Lithium. Great to see you again, Stephen. Good to see you too, Mark. Now, uh, we'll get to the latest developments at Acme Lithium in just a moment, but for those who may not be fully aware of Acme's story, can you give us a brief reminder and an overview of the various properties you have in Nevada, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan, and the strategy behind the locations? Sure. Thanks, Mark. Um, again, my name is Steve Hansen. I'm president and CEO and founder of Acme Lithium. I founded Acme Lithium uh, just over two and a half years ago with really the core belief that we're in a generational opportunity here for battery metals, in particular in lithium. I started focusing in on North America, again, with the belief that we were facing a crisis for this particular commodity, although Lithium is found in many places, actually, in North America. Um, we're underserviced when it comes to the commodity. So I began looking at various regions, focusing on jurisdiction, and most importantly, where are we currently producing lithium? Um, so I focused in on Nevada. Um, we have two projects in southwestern Nevada, which is one of the epicenters for lithium development in the U.S., and up until recently, one of the only places where lithium was produced. We've got a brine project in Clayton Valley, Nevada, that we're actively exploring and developing. And then we have a sedimentary claystone project uh, just to the west over the foothills. And then in Canada, um, we have a project uh, near the Tanko mine, a lithium cesium tantalum mine. We're just south of there, a couple kilometers. We're actually contiguous to those mineral leases. We're actively exploring there in southeastern Manitoba. And then we have a large land position in northern Saskatchewan with prospective pegmatites there. We're about to start an exploration program there in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, again, uh, work is ongoing. Um, two projects in Canada and a couple in Nevada. And uh, we're exciting to hopefully deliver on some milestones in the near term. Stephen, uh, you mentioned recently that uh, Acme Lithium is in a critical period right now. Uh, you've done this 10-day pumping test at your uh, Clayton Valley brine project. So uh, what was involved and, and why is it so significant? Well, many people may not know that lithium comes from a number of sources. It comes from hard rock and it comes from clays, but it also comes from brine, which is salt water um, deep in the earth. Uh, these are aquifers um, that potentially host brine. And there's a, 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 a production facility just to our south run by uh, the lithium giant Albemarle. They've been producing lithium from brine there since 19. 66. In fact, uh, we are their northwest neighbor. Um, we made a discovery there last summer and then proceeded with a phase two characterization program this late winter and spring. Part of that was drilling deeper, um, looking for uh, potential intervals or lithology that could host uh, this aquifer. Um, and so part, sure enough, we had lithium all the way down to basement. We've got just over 500 feet of potential productive interval there. So then the, the major piece of this characterization program for us is to drill a, what's called a test well. In essence, we're drilling a water well. This is a larger diameter hole. Uh, it's to understand the aquifer. You need pressure permeability. You need, you need flow. You need water flow. Um, and so part of this test well certainly is to understand what we have there. We've got grade that's similar to the region. Um, and so um, this pump test, which uh, um, we've just just completed, we announced this morning that we completed this 10 day pump test. It was successful. We're very excited about um, these developments. Again, this is one of the most critical uh, moments, certainly in our company's short history. And again, we'll continue to analyze this data. Um, brine samples have been sent off to the lab. Uh, my team is actively working on, uh, again, better understanding and evaluating the data that we have. We'll provide further updates as we get more information. And the real goal here, the whole vision of this company is to explore, discover, and then ultimately get to a resource. So all this information is going to be helpful as we head towards that goal. Let's continue with that, uh, Steve. You said that you're expecting results from the, the pumping test uh, later on this month and then over the course of uh, several weeks. So it sounds like it's going to be a pretty steady news flow. Uh, based on your uh, the work you've done already, your location, are, are you quite hopeful? Do you have high expectations or are you just trying to uh, calm yourself and just wait for the data? Well, the data is what, what's going to be key here. We, the numbers are going, to, are going to tell us where where we are at. So, again, we've got 
Um, some good information so far. We're, we're certainly positive on, on the outlook. Um, every uh, sort of milestone or step that we've taken, we've been successful at so far with this project. So as more information comes in, um, we're really hopeful that we'll, we'll have the results that we're looking for. Again, um, we expect uh, further news. We made an announcement in a press release with an update this morning. Um, and then we are hopeful that we'll have further information over the next few weeks as my team continues to analyze the data. So anything material that comes up, we certainly will announce it. And again, we're hopeful that we can have uh, the right numbers that will uh, hopefully lead us to a resource down the road. As far as the uh, type of technology you may be using, you've said that you've had a uh, number of discussions with direct lithium extraction companies or DLE uh, companies. Now, as you know, you've got uh, Schlumberger and Panasonic right in your backyard in Nevada with a demonstration facility. Uh, does it just make logical sense that eventually you'd send some brine there and make an arrangement with uh, those two companies? And or uh, would you pursue some of the other options that you're exploring? Well, traditionally, um, brine uh, around the world and including uh, to our neighbor to the south, Adam Marley, um, brine has been um, pumped to the surface and put in large evaporation ponds. Um, that's the way it's been done in Chile and Argentina and the U.S. and, and other places in the world. Um, emerging technology is coming to the forefront here. You mentioned it, DLE, direct lithium extraction. And so rather than having brine sitting on surface, waiting for it to evaporate. Recoveries can sometimes be, be relatively low. Uh, this new technology is really going to be a game changer for our industry. You're pumping brine into a plant, into a facility. In many cases, you're extracting lithium in 48 to 72 hours. So a much faster turnaround. Uh, some of the DLA companies are claiming certainly that they have much better recoveries. So we've been following this technology for well, probably a year and a half, ever since we we sort of got started here in Clayton Valley. As you mentioned, in fact, there is a demonstration plant, DLE plant that's been constructed this spring to our south by Schlumberger and, and Panasonic. Um, they are testing brine um, as we speak. Um, we know them well, we're following their project. Um, uh, and so certainly, you know, our goal here would be is to get samples of brine to some of the DLE companies. There are others out there that have good technology as well. And so we're, we're evaluating those too. Um, you know, General Motors put $60 million into Energy X. The Canadian government has put over $50 million into E3. Lilac has good technologies, a number of others out there. And so we'll continue to evaluate them. The first step for us would be is to get brine once we get the results back off to some of the DLE companies, you know, have some, some chemistry done, some, some analysis done, uh, have it tested and, and see, in fact, we can, we can have some good results there. So we'll continue that dialogue with a number of DLE companies. And uh, again, if we have continued success, we hope to have a collaboration uh, with a DLE company down the road. Now, as far as a fish lake, your other project in Nevada, you've said that it's it's drill ready, but you've also said uh, it really depends on access to capital and you can only do so much at once. So what's the latest there? Well, we're not a one trick pony. We've got multiple projects and we believe that diver diversifies our risk, but it also means that we need access to greater amounts of capital. And so we've uh, we've spent some time uh, at our, our Fish Lake Valley project. Again, this is a, um, a sedimentary claystone project. Um, we're contiguous to the west to a world-class lithium boron project uh, run by an Australian company called Ioneer. We're just down the road a couple kilometers from their project. Um, again, we're contiguous to the west. We've done geophysics there. We've done multiple phases of geochemistry and sampling on surface. Um, we're getting good grade on surface for, in lithium, and then we're also getting boron anomalies as well. So I've designed a, a drill program, which would be a maiden drill program uh, that would involve um, some rotary and core holes. Again, we're continuing to evaluate the budget and the potential for that project. Permitting is fairly straightforward, um, but really it depends on access to capital. There's only so many cups of tea we can bring to boil. So, you know, we've been active uh, in Manitoba this winter. We've been active in Nevada at Clayton Valley this winter, spring, and now summer. And then we're about to begin some field work in Saskatchewan. So uh, that project is ready. And then with uh, access to capital and potentially a partner, we'd like to be drilling that sometime in the future. 
Steve, you've also said that uh, you've had active discussions with potential partners. Uh, is that a logical thing to do down the road if for no other reason than to, to mitigate some of your risk with a few of your assets? Well, you know, only 100% of our projects is certainly in the interest of ACME, but we have to look at other opportunities. You know, there are good uh, um, geological partners um, with sound management teams. There, there are partners that have uh, appropriate capital, uh, whether they come through a joint venture, uh, optioning in on the projects, uh, royalty opportunities, uh, potentially even future offtake opportunities. We continue to evaluate those, the, those uh, situations on all of our projects. Um, again, if the right partner strategically uh, is interested in spending money uh, on our projects in concert, you know, and we can continue to build, build value for shareholders, uh, that's certainly interesting uh, for us. But we're not going to give these projects away either. So, you know, for us, um, uh, again, that dialogue will continue. Um, but really, my goal here is to build value for shareholders. It has to be in the interest of creating value uh, for the long term. Lastly, Steve, as we look at the lithium sector itself, you said off the top and you said before, you think from a supply standpoint, North America is in crisis and, and you've been saying that for many months. Are, are you seeing some progress to the point where uh, you, uh, the, 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 the crisis aspect is dissipating or is, it still, is there still a really long way to go in order to get supply to where demand uh, is going to be over the next many years? Well, the good news is we we are seeing a action here, and that goes at the municipal level, the state and provincial level, the federal level, and, and governments in Canada and, and the U.S. And we're seeing, you know, obviously a lot of capital pouring into advanced projects. So the good news for North America is we are seeing a product coming on stream. Uh, you know, there's some world class projects that are. Uh, about to go into construction. So there is going to be um, some supply coming to market. But over the medium to long term, that's really where the concerns is. Benchmark, uh, an independent consulting firm, has estimated we need 67 lithium mines globally to go into production to meet global supply. So again, again, the Canadian government has put out their critical mineral strategy this past December. Uh, Biden's government has put out um, its white paper on lithium, uh, as well as the Defense Production Act, the Inflation Reduction Act. So governments are finally um, uh, understanding the, the uh, problem that we're facing uh, here in North America. It's all fine and well to build infrastructure uh, for auto manufacturers and technology companies to grow their business, to build battery factories, but we need a domestic supply. Most of the world's supply right now comes from only four countries, from Chile, uh, Argentina, Australia, and China. We can't rely on foreign jurisdictions for our supply. We need to create a, a homegrown supply here. And again, over the long term, Acme Lithium hopes to be one of those providers. Stephen, thank you very much for the update today. We'll be following Acme Lithium's news flow, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Great. Thanks, Mark. Okay, Stephen Hansen, President, CEO, and founder at Acme Lithium.